Hello and welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 1, Tutorial 27B. In this tutorial, we will cover how to account for amortized cost bonds, or AC bonds, under both IFRS and ASPE using the effective interest rate method. This tutorial is a supplemental resource to the Arnold and Kyle Open Educational Resource Text, Volume 1. This tutorial has one learning objective, which will be to review how to account for investments in bonds classified as amortized cost, or AC, under both international financial reporting standards and accounting standards for private enterprise using the effective interest rate method. This tutorial follows scenario two of the Tiberius B problem, so please make sure you download the correct file and review the data and requirements prior to proceeding. The requirement for this tutorial will be that assuming that the company reports under IFRS or ASPE and classifies the investments in bonds as amortized cost or AC, we need to prepare the journal entries for the following transactions. The purchase of the bonds on July 1st, the interest payment received on December 31st. We will then proceed with the journal entry for the payment of the interest on the bonds on June 30th and then the partial sale of the bonds on November 1st, 2021, and then going just one more period, the interest payment for the remaining bonds on June 30th, 2022. Our first entry on July 1st, 2020, is to record the purchase of the bonds. So we will debit an AC investments account or amortized cost investments account for the present value of $634,513 and credit cash for the same amount. If you're not sure where this came from, you just want to make sure that you review tutorial 26 and that'll walk you through the present value calculations. I've started a T account up here. We're going to show a debit into the T account on the left side for $634,513. Our second entry is to record the cash payment of interest received on the bonds. So at December 31st, 2020, we will debit cash for 15,000, credit interest revenue for 12,690, and I've included a piece of the amortization schedule from the previous tutorials. So the balance of 634,513 times 2% will give us this 12,690. When we take the difference between the payment and the interest, that's the amortization on the bond premium. So we will credit AC investments for the premium amortization amount of 2,310. Our next interest payment date is June 30th, 2021. Following the same approach, the balance from the end of the last period, 632,203 times 2%, of course, will give us interest revenue of 12,644. The difference between 15,000 and 12,644 is premium amortization of 2,356. We will debit cash for the interest payment received of 15,000, credit interest revenue for 12,644, and credit amortized cost investments for the premium amortization of 2,356, and put those in the T accounts. So we've got our beginning balance of 634.513 and the two uh, amortization premiums, leaving now a balance of 629.847. Now, on November 1st, 2021, is when the company decides to sell 40% of the bonds. So what has to happen is at October 31st, 2021, the day before the bonds are sold, we have to accrue the interest revenue up to the point prior to the sale on the portion of the bonds that are sold. In the amortization schedule, what we have is a calculation of the portion of the payment that would be paid by the purchaser of the bonds. Because what happens is when the purchaser buys bonds, it pays for the bonds, but also for the interest up to that date. Because the purchaser of the bonds will actually receive the full amount of the interest on the bonds from the company that issued the bonds when the interest payment's made. That's an administrative issue. If 40% of the bonds are sold, what happens is 40% of the interest payment prorated by four over six months. So this $4,000 here is actually 15,000 times 40% times four over six months, inclusive to the end of October 31st. What's going to happen is the company is going to record cash of $4,000 this is a separate transaction conceptually from the actual bonds themselves. They can be done in one entry. Then what happens is the interest revenue of $3,359 is actually the interest on the next period. See in this little formula right here, 629847 times 2% times 40% sold times 4 over 6 is the interest revenue, right? And that's 629847 
is the balance at that point times the interest rate of 2%, prorated by 4 over 6 months and 40% of the bonds that are sold. Results in a difference of amortization of $641, which is this amount in the table. This can also be shown as one set of calculations. So the $15,000 payment that would normally be received minus the interest on the next period's payment of 629.847 times 2%, that's a difference of 2,403. That's the total amount of premium amortization that would be on the next payment, but now prorated by four or six months because the bonds were sold prior to the next interest payment date times 40%. So 641. So our journal entry, debit cash, 4,000, credit interest receivable for 3,359, and credit AC investments of 641. We put that in our T account right here, and this leaves us with a balance before the actual now sale of the bonds themselves at November 1st or October 31st, however you like it, of $629,206. Now that we've updated the balance of our account to 629.206 and in our amortization table, taking the portion of the bonds that would be sold, we can now sell 40% of those. So 40% times 629.206 is $251,298. So that leaves a balance of 377908, 377908 in the T account. And we would record the transaction, a debit to cash, 196000 Remember that that calculation is based on the original 500,000 bonds times 40% sold, and they're sold at 98, so 0.98 is $196,000. I will then record the credit to my investment account, my AC investments, for the 40% of the carrying value at that point. So 40% of 629,206 is 251,298, and that results in a loss on sale of $55,298. And then our last requirement is to record the next interest payment at December 31st, 2021. The balance in the account after the sale of the bonds is 377,908. If I take that times 2%, that will give me 75.58, of course. The difference between that and the payment that remains is a premium amortization of 14.42. And of course, this interest amount is the 15,000 payment that was based on the full amount of the bonds. Now, 60% of the bonds remain result in a new cash payment of $9,000. Debit cash 9,000, credit interest revenue for 7558, and credit amortized cost investments for the premium amortization of 1,442. We've put this in our table as a credit, so now the balance of the bonds on the balance sheet are 376,466 at December 31st, 2021. Now the actual requirement here is to record the June 30th, 2022 interest payment. But of course, we can't do that until we did the December 31st, 2021 interest payment. One more period, June 30th, 2022. We will debit cash for $9,000. We know because that's the amount of cash that will always be received with our partial amortization schedule now. After the December 31st payment, the balance is 376466 And if we multiply that by 2%, gives us interest revenue of 7529 So credit interest revenue, 7529 The difference between the 9000 payment and the interest revenue is premium amortization of 1471 so we will credit AC investments for $1,471, put that in the T account on the credit side, leaving us a balance now of $374,995. So that's it for all the numbers and calculations. We'll now close off with some key points to remember. First, AC investments in debt securities are reported at amortized cost using the effective interest rate method at each balance sheet date. Brokerage fees are typically added to the investment cost Usually there are no brokerage fee on bond transactions that you'll see because they're hidden in the price of the deal. Sometimes they could be separate, but what would happen then is they would just get added to the cost and be amortized uh, going forward. Next, AC investments are reported as long-term assets unless they're expected to mature within 12 months of the balance sheet date or the normal operating cycle. Bonds are not remeasured to fair value when reported as AC investments under ASPE or IFRS. Bonds classified as amortized cost are tested for impairment under the incurred loss model. And recoveries of impairment are permissible under IFRS and ASPE, but they're limited to any previous amounts impaired. And remember, 
Before making a sale, always update the investment account for the bond or premium discount amortization before a sale or impairment transaction. And when it comes to a sale, only for the portion of the bonds that are sold. With an impairment, you would update the account for the prorated amortization of the bond premium or discount for all of the bonds or investment. But when there's a partial sale, remember we only made an adjustment on the portion of the bonds that were sold. That ends tutorial 27B, and we hope you found this tutorial helpful.